Hi all. Hi all. Mass Barncup from Casa Power Electronics here. Today we're taking a look at some old cable TV equipment and it is from a company called Scientific Atlanta. Now while you might not know who Scientific Atlanta is, they are today known as Cisco. Cisco bought up Scientific Atlanta many years ago and for a long time rebranded just the outside of the products, but inside many Cisco products you can also find the brand name Scientific Atlanta. Today's teardown is this high frequency combiner and also this pretty smashed up unknown power supply. The power supply is labeled Scientific Atlanta. Description P2PSMAW, February 2008. Manufactured by Tektrol or Total Power Solutions. Hmm. So the real product number seems to be TC53S1469A. 250 watt output max. And being audio or video telecom equipment, this is most likely 28 volt or 48 volt. So a rather small Vorset's power supply for its size. The front is missing, but um, apparently there's only a green and red LED here. At the back side we have the large power contactors and what appears to be a regular control interface into a backplane or server rack. The HF video combiner says that uh, underneath this lid we have attenuator, equalizer and such. And that's also why we have the finger screws as this is serviceable equipment. The front has our two inputs, primary and backup power supply, 28 volt DC. There is status LEDs, we have a test point, we have an output and a alarm output. This is the model 9954H, one gigahertz. On the other side here, we have a combiner diagram. And here we get a perfect explanation of the circuit inside. We have the two inputs. We have equalizers, we have gain blocks, post gain, PAD, and we have a combiner, and then we have our output and a minus 20 dB test point. And it states here that it's 28 volt at half an amp. By today's standards, this is a pretty oversized power supply. Being 250 watt and having 15 TO220 devices and a single TO247 device and over here we have a full bridge rectifier. But look at the amount of magnetics. What we can see here is that the switching frequency of this is actually not very high, which explains the large number of yeah, heavy magnetics. But also seem to be outputting a lot more than just a single voltage. One, two, transformers, maybe would multiply voltage outputs. Down here we have a nice little um, transformer, seems to be some kind of feedback because there's pulled out at least the blue wires here, that is something like six to seven turns. This is the red wire, it's a single turn. And there's also a red wire going underneath here, but that just seems to be a jumper of some sort. So um, maybe a bit of a hackery to actually get some um, some power for some additional circuits. Over here we have some current transformers. We have current transformers here. So actually a lot of um, measurements and being a monitored power supply. So that could also be an explanation for the huge layout that is actually a pretty well-built design that can diagnostic itself. With the backside open, it gets pretty clear that the two contacts we have over here is the 230 volt AC input. And we can see that on the backside again in a moment. The large output contacts over here are not all in parallel. So it's most likely different voltages. Other than that, we can see a lot of discrete sitting here, a lot of diodes, transistors, capacitors, and resistors. So it's quite a complex design. Back to the other side. This was the 230 volt AC input. So here we have common mode noise filtering with TVS diodes and X or Y rated capacitors. We have the bridge rectifier here. And from here it fed back into the whole circuit over here. So maybe it's just a intermediate DC link converter. Then that 
supplies through these three current transformers. So we have three output voltages over in this row. It took some pretty brutal butchering to get into the power supply because I would have to, yeah, remove all the magnetics or just pull the heat sinks out. So that turned out to be the easiest part. But we actually only have a single switch sitting in this row, which is a MJE 15,000. And then we just have diode, diode, voltage regulator, diode, diode. So a lot of uh, different components here. There's actually not a single two even here. It's just all different, seven different devices sitting here. We have a single diode and then we have these two are 47 C T Q 120 or something like that. And we have a 332 CTQ 030. Let's see what's inside. Professional video equipment accessory. Bolts were so corroded that I'm actually a bit eager to see what's actually inside. Because I had to knock them off with a hammer. Yeah, that's pretty much destroyed from corrosion. What we can see though is that this has been installed somewhere with a pretty even cable length. We have a zero and a two to be attenuators. These are generally just small insert resistors. And over here we have a zero one and we have a, what's to say, eight. An eight to be, and we have a plastic cover and a lot of aluminum oxide. I mean, look at that. All this is just oxidized enclosure. It's just a white powder everywhere. Here we have the seven and a half to be equalizer. Marked to work between 45 and a thousand megahertz. Made in Taiwan. What makes out a five legged equalizer? Passives and some very tiny coils. We have the power amplifiers sitting here or perhaps underneath, but I think it's these two. They are named ACA2402R. The heatsink was not enough, so it has an additional, yeah, what do you call it? More normal heatsink attached to the back of it. The four screws did not feel much better, very tight due to corrosion. And as we can see, it's just as bad, wow. So on this side, we actually have the power supply inputs. We have the status, we have the alarm output relay. So this is all the controlled logic and power handling. And we have all the RF components on the opposite side. A few bits got destroyed trying to get this out. It had a huge grounding clip over here and we have the power supply coming through a probably isolated part there but here we can see that it was in fact the two combining amplifiers sitting here with huge heat sinks on the back side and we have a small coaxial cable running across here and that is over to the output test point so the test point is actually just taken before the amplifier and if we refer back to our schematic here. We have our input, we have the paths, we have the equalizers, we have a gain block, and then we have a two-way combiner sitting over here, and we have the output and the test output. I hope you enjoyed the small video on this Cisco or slash Scientific Atlanta telecom or video broadcasting equipment. I hope that I earned your like and subscribe and please do leave a comment. Every comment will get an answer. This really helps build my channel when you interact with the video. So thank you for leaving a comment. So until next time, see ya.